Let's do a little bit more with domain arrange. So we're going to say continued some more. <laughs> Not quite done yet. We're going to look at the domain arrange of this function. I'm actually going to start with the range because I think it's not as difficult to look at as the previous examples. So remember range refers to Z values of the outputs and it should be pretty easy to tell from this that you know if X squared and Y squared are both positive by subtracting them th that means that whatever Z is the square root of 16 is the biggest possible value that we're going to get out of this radical. It starts at 16 and gets smaller. So the square root of 16, or 4, is as big as it gets. And recall that, you know, if the square root of a positive number is positive and the square root of 0 is 0, and the square root of negative is not real, that means there's a, a lowest value we can get here also, and that is zero. Eventually, this thing is going to get down to zero in the root, and this literally becomes our range. Now, we should call it what it is. Square root of 16 is 4, or put it as an interval notation. You know, one of these two values, uh, solutions would be appropriate. Either one works for me in my classroom. And you already know there's multiple other notations you can use to talk about that particular interval. So now we can go look at the domain. So the domain, we're going to sketch it again. 16 minus x squared minus 2y squared. That quantity here has to be non-negative or greater than or equal to 0. So, a little manipulation here. 16 is greater than or equal to x squared plus 2y squared. I'm going to do a little reversal here. x squared plus 2y squared is less than or equal to 16. And you could say that is the domain. You choose x and y values so that this statement is true and you're good. But my directions say sketch. What's it look like? So, the visual for this will be found by dividing both sides by 16. x squared over 16 plus y squared divided by 8 is less than or equal to 1. And my students and my guests, you guys remember what that graph is? Why, yes, that is an ellipse. That's an ellipse. That ellipse x and y axis, four units to the right and four units to the left of the origin. Square root of eight is a little bit less than three units up and negative square root of eight. And there's an equal sign here, which means I am going to graph you an ellipse and it's not going to be drawn to scale because I am drawing it and because I'm not using better graph paper. But this ellipse is sort of a fence surrounding x and y values that, oh, are the x and y values in here the good ones? Or are they the ones out here? It says less than or equal to. Maybe I'm supposed to know this particular type of inequality, but maybe I'm not as familiar with it. If you test the point 0, 0 in our original algebra to see if this is greater than or equal to 0, like it says, 16 minus 0 squared minus 2 times 0 squared is equal to 16. Uh -huh, that's that's definitely greater than or equal to 0. So that means 0, 0 is a good point. Well, what if we test the point out here, 5, comma 0? Well, what's that do? 5, comma 0, 16 minus 5 squared 
minus 2 times 0 squared. That is equal to a negative number. No. You cannot take the square root of a negative number. Every point inside of this ellipse represents a point that's in the domain of this function. Now I don't quite know what it looks like, but I know I have this elliptical foundation and the z values start on the xy plane and they go four units up. Maybe I'm supposed to know this graph, but maybe I'm not. But I do know that I can answer these questions that get me closer to understanding the function than I was before. Now, let's take a variation. This function, and I think I have to slide everything out from underneath here, it just got too busy. This version of the problem is nearly equivalent, but remember, so square root of negative is bad, but also dividing by zero is bad. So this problem 16 minus x squared minus 2y squared has to be greater than zero now with no equal sign. When I solve this inequality similar to what I just did, remember you have a pause button, you can use it and rewind, you would get x squared over 16 plus y squared over 8 is less than 1. And when we were to try to graph this ellipse for and negative 4 square root of 8 and negative square root of 8. If there's no equal sign, this ellipse is going to be made up of dotted segments. Cannot touch that set of dotted segments. Every point in the ellipse is good, but the ellipse itself is undefined and outside of the ellipse will be more undefined. You're going to have these situations coming up if we try to use these values. This is our domain. Now, what's going on with the range? This one's fun. So previously this version, the range was from 0 to 4. Well, what happens if we do the reciprocal of that? What happens to this over here? Well, let me take us back quite a ways in our math journey and look at a different inequality. So this is sort of my scratch paper over here now. You guys recall that 2 would be less than 5. But if you were to take the reciprocal of both of these, which one is smaller now? If you're going to buy a pizza and there's two people, you each get half a pizza. That's more than if there's five people and you split it evenly this is greater than this. When we do this reciprocal, if I were to take the reciprocal, that's going to change the inequality. But this is a whole bunch of wrong right here. I am not sure what that means. I'm a little bit startled. I just wrote 1 over 0, which is undefined. Then I put z is equal to an undefined value. That cannot be right. Well, it turns out that we can't see it easily from my anything on this paper, but that this is basically stating that z is going to continue to grow the closer you get to this undefined value, this ellipse. 
that your range is actually going to be from one-fourth to infinity. And if you give me a moment here, I will show you a visual that better demonstrates this. What you're looking at right now is the top view of the function that we were just studying and you're able to see its domain is that ellipse that goes four units left and right and root eight units up and down. Now here's the third dimension. This is what happens when you turn a sort of a bowl inside out. The lowest z value on this graph right here is one-fourth and it goes up forever. As you approach that edge of the ellipse. So the closer you get to the ellipse, which was a dotted graph, the farther up towards infinity you get. Fascinating, isn't it? Until next time.